Tonight on News Watch 12 at 6, the Medford School District is considering new cell phone policies at its schools. And the Oregon DMV is providing an update on the voter error data the organization sharing and has completed its after action report. Plus, a ballot measure for Ashland residents is raising funding concerns. All this and more is coming up next on News Watch 12 at 6. Watching out for you. This is News Watch 12 at 6. We begin on your voice, your vote tonight. Assured access to clean drinking water. Is it worth $75 million? And is there another way? That is what residents will be deciding in Ashland this upcoming election. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Haley Gravitt. Newswatch 12's Rocky Walker spoke to those on both sides of the debate for Measure 15234 and shares where they lie. Take a look. This vote behind me leads to the Rita Reservoir as well as the Ashland Water Filtration Plant. But a measure on the upcoming November ballot could dictate the finances on how that plant is replaced. In just a month, Ashland residents will vote on Measure 15234, deciding whether to fund the replacement of the city's water treatment facility with a $75 million loan from the Environmental Protection Agency. While those supporting the measure use the slogan, water is life, those who oppose it say, It's not about clean water, it's about money. Ashland's a town of 21,000 people. We have this issue to address. We have millions and millions of other dollars of infrastructure improvements that the city says we need to make. With fears of pricing out residents and a slippery slope to further local government spending, those opposing the measure to uphold a council funding decision say the public is owed communication before such large investments. I want to have a public discussion, a really good public discussion about what are our priorities, how are we going to pay for it. Those who support the measure say footing the cost is the responsibility of those who benefit from the upgrade and facility replacement. And with the treatment plant in a space that is in risk of wildfires, earthquakes, and landslides, the city says it's their responsibility to make sure the community has the resources they need. One of the city of Ashland's primary responsibilities is to take care of the infrastructure that allows our people to live here and to live well and allows our businesses to thrive. Clean drinking water is right at the heart of that. It is a primary responsibility of the city of Ashland. And unfortunately, infrastructure projects cost a lot of money. To learn more about the measure and the water plant replacement project, head to our website, kdrv.com. In Ashland, Rocky Walker, Newswatch 12. Also on your voice your vote tonight, the Oregon DMV has announced that it has completed its after action report following the voter data data error. An additional 302 records have been sent to Oregon Secretary of State for an activation. The Secretary of State's office is reviewing these documents to determine if any one of these individuals have a voting history. The DMV says that these records contained evidence of clerical errors regarding citizenship status. But it also says that does not necessarily mean they belong to non-citizens. Happening now in Chiloquin, Klamath County voters are attending a, can a candidate forum to learn more about candidates running in November. Candidates for county commissioner and sheriff are speaking and answering community members' questions. The forum is being live streamed if you can't make it in person. A recording of the meeting will also be posted tomorrow, and you can find a link to that recording on our website, kdrv.com. Looking at a crime watch story for us tonight and an update on the Nagasi Zuberi trial. Today, the Medford Federal Court is continuing with the jury selection process. News Watch 12 went to the courtroom this morning. We were told the full trial is expected to start on Wednesday the 9th. Zuberi is accused of sexually assaulting and kidnapping a Seattle woman and holding her in a cinder block cell you see here in his garage. And also, on a Newswatch 12 update, a civil case against the Sante Rogue Regional Medical Center is getting larger. 
Schlesinger and de Villeneuve law firm is adding more plaintiffs to its lawsuit against Asante after filing its original complaint September 3rd. It amended its complaint twice. It added a new plaintiff and a new claim amount each time. It now has 20 plaintiffs seeking a total of more than $337 million from Asante. The civil case comes from a pending related criminal drug diversion case. The criminal case accuses a former nurse of diverting pain medication to herself, replacing it with tap water that caused patients to be sick. And looking at a follow-up tonight, Providence Medford Medical Center and nurses represented by the Oregon Nurses Association met in a bargaining session today. Newswatch 12 previously reported on the negotiations, which are being assisted with federal mediation. ONA nurses at six Providence locations across Oregon have been working on an expired contract since March. And looking at the school watch, the Medford School District launched a survey this evening to get input on students' cell phone use at schools. The current cell phone policy requires cell phones to be turned off while in classrooms unless otherwise instructed by a teacher. Different secondary schools within the district each have their own phone, gu phone guidelines based on this policy. Any update would have to get approved by the school board. Top down thing, and there's not a lot of support for it. Then and we don't we don't expect that to be very successful. So we also want to look at what can we do that's going to be successful and work well. The Medford Education Association is showing their support for a survey with input from different perspectives. In a statement they told Newswatch 12, quote, we think that asking parents and teachers for feedback and insight is a great place to start. We all want the same thing here, kids learning in the best environment possible. The link to take the survey is up on our website, kdrv.com. And Henley Elementary School was closed to start the week after a norovirus outbreak. Newswatch 12 told you on Friday that about 200 students called out sick. The school and the Klamath County Public Health decided to close school completely today. The Public Health Department tells Newswatch 12 no additional closures are being recommended at this time. And looking at a fire watch tonight, a 15 acre fire in Siskiyou County, now 25% con contained and is being investigated. Take a look at the thick smoke from this forest camera here. The fire was reported just before 2 p.m. south of Hambone in Siskiyou County on Sunday. Cal Fire Siskiyou says the fire started in three large log decks and spread to nearby timber and grass. There are no evacuations or road closures in place. And Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order to support ongoing fire response and recovery efforts in California. From the airport fire in Southern California to the park fire in Butte County, the executive order includes provisions that expedite debris removal and cleanup. This will also ensure proper staffing for emergency response by waiving work hour limitations for retired and nuitants. This will also support school districts by waiving requirements related to outdoor physical education during periods of poor air quality due to fires. And this week is Fire Prevention Week, and fire departments are making sure that everyone has a working smoke detector. Newswatch 12 has covered multiple fires in the past few weeks. Many times a working smoke alarm has alerted families to that fire, allowing them to evacuate safely and also alert fire departments and save a majority of those homes. And as a part of Fire Prevention Week, some local fire stations are hosting open houses for the community to take a look inside where they live and how they respond to emergencies. In Medford, Station 12 is having their open house tomorrow, October 8th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And Station 16 having theirs on Wednesday, October 9th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. You can see the addresses here on your screen. And if you are unable to make it to those, the Jacksonville Fire Department will be having an open house on their of their own this weekend on Saturday the 12th from noon to 3. You can tour the station, learn more about fire safety and hear from the department and their partnering agencies that are all keeping the community safer. Tonight, the Phoenix City Council will be discussing the addition of an alert wildfire camera. Last year, a FEMA funded grant approved 
to install 12 cameras across the Rogue Valley. The Phoenix camera is the 13th plan for the system. We'll have more information on the camera and its funding and take a live look into this meeting coming up in half an hour. And the leaves are starting to turn, which can only mean one thing. It's time for our 34th annual Coats for Kids campaign. You have already been showing so many generous donations. Newswatch 12 is working with our partners and you at home to provide new and gently used children's coats. They're for children in Jackson, Josephine, and Klamath counties. We have more than 50 donation barrel locations available, but you can also donate to our Coats for Kids drive online or by check. We are accepting checks sent to KDRV, the address shown here on your screens. And on KDRV.com, there is a full list of where all of our red donation barrels are. We are so grateful for the support of our partners and you at home. And as much of the east region of the country recovering from Hurricane Helene while preparing for Hurricane Milton, the Red Cross is doing what they can to support from the West Coast. A member from the Red Cross said donating and encouraging someone else to donate is needed now more than ever. And at North Valley High School, students had the chance to be a part of the community impact with their annual blood drive. One student shared that the Red Cross gave students the opportunity to be a part of something bigger. That's how I know some people. Like, I didn't know their name before, but now I'm like, I know that person. Like, they donated blood. It's super cool. And, like, with the parents doing it, too, like, it's just, like, a big community thing. And a Southern Oregon University is hosting their first blood drive in 17 years. Their drive will take place tomorrow and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And a Jewish memorial has been set up in the city of Rogue River, honoring the one year since the terrorist attacks on Israel. There are 1,200 flags on this patch of grass at Rogue River Assembly of God. It's a representation of how many lives were lost a year ago today. This isn't a total representation of all the lives lost on both sides, but it still paints a very grim picture about the toll of this war. Newswatch 12 talked with the pastor of the church who says there has been and support from the community. Not really our surprise, but we were happy to uh, to see that the people were supportive of what we were of what we were doing. He also encourages his congregation and community to continue to pay attention to what's going on in this war. If you want to go see this display, he told Newswatch 12 it will be up until the end of the day. Now let's check in with Stormwatch 12 Chief Meteorologist Matt Hoffman to give us a look at what our conditions are shaping up for us like outside right now. Well, pretty clear conditions right now. Take a look outside on our Newswatch 12 weather cam network. We've fallen back into the upper 80s in Medford after hitting 91 today. Definitely uh, feeling very summer like once again today. 83 currently in Wairika, 78 in Klamath Falls, and we're sitting at 64 degrees in Brookings. Check out these highs today. 90 in Grants Pass. We made it to 83 in Klamath Falls, 89 in Montague, and earlier today, 82 degrees in Brookings for a high. We do have a few showers, mainly off to our south and east. So skies will stay mainly clear tonight, apart from maybe a few high clouds trying to work into the region. A cool start to tomorrow down to 49 in Medford, 37 in Klamath Falls. Uh, tomorrow we'll see generally mostly sunny skies, warm conditions inland, but it won't be as hot as what we saw today. Temperatures, though, still getting up to nearly right around 10 degrees above average for this time of the year. But we're going to cool things down even a little bit more as we head into Wednesday. A closer look at your forecast through the rest of the work week coming up. Haley.